Today on the show, I talk about a possible theory regarding Thor Ragnarok's plot. Hello and welcome to the show with issues. I'm Orum, and ever since Marvel Studios revealed their entire Phase 3 lineup, people have been speculating as to what the plots of the movies would be and how they would relate to the larger universe that Marvel created. One of the movies that people were buzzing about was Thor Ragnarok, the third Thor film. Things have sort of quieted down about the future MCU stuff lately with Age of Ultron coming up soon, but I still wanted to talk about this theory since I find it really awesome and exciting. Enough rambling, let's get started. <laughs> Alright, so our obvious first clue as to what Thor 3's plot is about is its subtitle, Ragnarok. In the comics, the name Ragnarok has been applied to many things over the years. There are two main ones, though the world killing event, and the robot clone of the Odinson himself. Pretty huge extremes of the spectrum here, so let's talk about the event version first. Ragnarok is a prophecy told by the Asgardians that basically means the end of everything. It's a world ending cycle that repeats itself until everything is destroyed. Now, the history of Ragnarok and its occurrences are very muddy at this point, seeing as people have created false Ragnaroks to scare one another, and it's inherently a cycle that repeats itself. We also just plain don't know everything about Asgard's history, so we can never be 100% sure on how many times Ragnarok has occurred. The Two main times it has occurred in Marvel Comics, however, are pretty clear. Once in the 70s, which was pretty lame and only lasted about six issues, and again in 2004 as a tie-in and prelude to Avengers Disassembled. This version of Ragnarok really was the end of everything. Well, maybe not. It ended up just being the death of all Asgardians, but still, that's a pretty big deal. This all happened when Loki decided to team up with Surtur to create and use weapons made from the same forge and material as Mjolnir to assault Asgard. A group of beings named those who sit above in shadow, who basically are the cause and energy of the Ragnarok cycle, saw this and manipulated Asgard into repeating the cycle once more. Thor, realizing this, hung himself so that he could hunt those who sit above in shadow down to end the cycle forever. In Thor's absence, however, all other Asgardians died at the hands of the Ragnarok cycle. After destroying the beings that controlled the cycle and entering a long hibernation period that lasted all the way until after the events of Civil War, Thor returned to Earth and rebuilt Asgard. He also went on a mission to find all the lost Asgardian souls and awaken them in their new host bodies. I know, all of this is pretty confusing, but I did go into more detail about this event in another episode of the show, so click here if you want to check that out. So that's the Ragnarok Cycle, a world-ending event that happened time and time again until the Odinson himself seemingly killed the beings responsible, effectively breaking the cycle once and for all. But Ragnarok can come in different forms, such as a clone of Thor himself, right? Well, yeah, we're talking about comics here. Anything can happen. Anyway, the story behind this version of Ragnarok is actually pretty interesting. It all happened during the Superhuman Civil War, a war amongst heroes caused by the implementation of a Superhuman Registration Act by the government, which basically forced the heroes to sign on with the government and reveal their secret identity. Heroes and villains chose sides, with Iron Man and Captain America heading the pro and anti-registration acts, respectively. Iron Man and his cohorts realized that if they were going to win and enforce the act, they would need some big firepower. This came in the form of a robot clone of Thor that was engineered from a strand of hair that Stark found years before this. The clone went crazy, killed a bunch of heroes during the war, and eventually decided to identify himself as Ragnarok. So now that we've got all the popular interpretations of Marvel's Ragnarok, how does it relate to the movie releasing in two years? Oh, and before I go any further, there will be spoilers from any MCU-related material from here on out, so there's your warning. Anyway, there are a multitude of theories regarding the happenings of Thor Ragnarok one of which gets me super excited. That theory involves Loki, Thanos, the Infinity Gauntlet, and the fate of Asgard itself. Basically, the theory states that Thanos will assault Asgard for two reasons, to get the Infinity Gauntlet and to take out Loki, and even possibly Thor. Ever since the Avengers, we've known that Loki was working for or with Thanos, seeing as that's who he got his staff and Infinity Gem from, and that Loki's in deep trouble with him since he failed to conquer Earth. We also briefly saw the Infinity Gauntlet in the Vault of Asgard, where the Destroyer and the Tesseract were being held. Whether or not that's canon or just a fun easter egg is still unknown. But if it is canon, it definitely provides a motive for Thanos and his army to come crashing down on Asgard's party. Just think about that. Thanos laying the smizzity smack down on Thor, all culminating into his and Asgard's death, also known as Ragnarok. There are, of course, other theories, most of which rustle my jimmies equally as much. Most of them involve Thor dying in Age of Ultron, which kinda makes sense. Execs at Marvel Studios have been quoted by saying that the Avengers roster will be different by the end of Age of Ultron. Whether this just means the addition of Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and the Vision, or the death of a hero is unknown. Most believe that it means a death will occur and through process of elimination, I've determined it will be Thor. Iron Man makes too much money and is confirmed to appear in Civil War. Captain America has Civil War soon. Black Widow is confirmed to be in Civil War, as is Hawkeye. You can't 
can't really kill the Hulk, and the rest of the new Avengers are just too new to kill off. Now, of course, you can always revive the aforementioned heroes before their next appearances, but they're all Earth-based, and that just seems a little too fantastical for them. Especially if we could see it in the beginning of Civil War, a very grounded story. I don't personally believe that Thor will be killed off in Age of Ultron, but the quote and Joss Whedon's involvement always has me worried. More than likely, though, Thor Ragnarok will just be an assault on Asgard from the inside and a final attempt to kill Thor by Loki. Who knows, though? Marvel Studios hasn't been scared of taking a turn from the source material before, so we really just have to wait and see. <laughs> Another average week for this guy. Super exciting stuff, though. I'll be getting seven titles, including Thor issue 7, Superior Iron Man issue 7, and Loki, Agent of Asgard issue 13. I am super excited to read this stuff. It feels like it's been forever since we got a Thor Iron Man issue. Anyway, here's the rest of Marvel and DC stuff with the rest of my list. That's another show for me. I'm so glad I finally got to talk about the MCU. I've been itching to do a full episode on something from it for a while and could never really think of a topic. Speaking of topics, if you have any suggestions or ideas for show topics, be sure to drop them in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as possible. Thanks for watching as always. I actually know what I'm doing next time. Next time, I'm reviewing Daredevil.